Hello, let's try to find instantaneous rate of change for a cubic parent function. Uh, well, we'll use the difference quotient method to find instantaneous rate of change. The cubic parent function is like f of x equals to x cubed, right? Now, difference quotient method to find instantaneous rate of change is let me write rate of change just with the symbol, right? That we'll use the symbol for instantaneous rate of change, okay? Now, is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, I hope you remember this, how, how this relates to instantaneous rate of change. Just to give you an idea, well, let me just sketch one cubic function here itself, right? Let's say let this is our cubic function, okay? Let's draw axis. Okay, so when we are trying to find instantaneous rate of change at any given point, then uh, what we do is we take a point, let's say this is my point, right? Let's consider this point to be, let us say x, some value of x, right? Then we take another point which is very close to this point and the distance away is h. Sometimes we write delta x. Now if I write here I can't really show it on your figure so I'm just showing you kind of think as if it is enlarged and listen this is the point okay. So this is the point where now my x value is x plus h. So this is slightly away and we say where h is very very small very very less than 1 or h is approaching 0 h. that means h is very close to x so at present because I have shown it further away if I draw a line between the two I get kind of a secant right but as I bring this h very very close to x then the two points almost join together and then you will have a tangent at this point which will kind of touch the graph only at one point right so that is the instance when at x the tangent slope will give you instantaneous rate of change right and since this is a cubic function we say it's instantaneous rate of change at any point x so x is any general point could be anywhere so we'll derive a general uh, formula for this okay now Let's go ahead with this. So here, what is x plus h? When we write function x plus h, function of x plus, then we are actually finding the y value, right? So this gives me the y value of x plus h, right? This value is f of x plus h, right? And this value here is the value at x, which we'll call as f of x. Is that okay? So this distance from here to here is the rise. Is that okay? And the distance between x plus h minus x is the run. Do you see that? And that run, if I do x plus h minus x, I get only h, right? So that is run. So rise over run is the slope of this tangent. And that slope gives us instantaneous rate of change, okay? Now, we'll use this formula to find instantaneous rate of change for a cubic parent function, okay? Now, let me continue with this. So... We we'll say instantaneous rate of change of this function will be, I'll replace this function notation with fx, x cube, right? So it becomes x plus h whole cube minus x cube over h, right? Now I hope you remember what is a plus b whole cube. If you don't, you can always you take the help of that Pascal's triangles right so we can start with number one and then we can go like this one one right and uh, when you add them next stage you get one two and one right and then if you go further down you get expansion for the cubic equation right I know you some most of you know this formula but this method helps if if say it is degree five or six then you can go down and get all the coefficients, right? So we can always make this on the side and then write down the formula, right? Because x plus h is always there. So for any polynomial of higher degree, it is a good method. So we'll expand it. 
right? So we get here x cube plus 3 x square h plus 3 x h square plus h cube and then minus x cube divided by h. Okay. Now x cube minus x cube is 0 and so we are left with 3x square h, 3x h square and h cube. Okay. So, so we are left with this and what I will do from here I'll take h common or oh, let me just break up the steps h plus 3x h square plus h cube over h okay so now here as I was saying I can take h common right so I can take h common and I'm left with 3x square plus 3x h plus h square over h correct now we can cancel out this term and we are left with 3x square plus 3xh plus h square. Okay. Now, at this stage, there are a couple of things which we can do, right? Sometimes your problem will ask, give an answer to three decimal places. In that case, you have to assume value of h to be 0 0.001 and then plug in the value and then get your answer, right? Let us say you want to find instantaneous rate of change for the function at x equals to 1. So you can plug in 1 for x and 0 0.001 for h and then calculate the value. So that will be approximated to three decimal places, right? The In general, what we do normally is we assume that h is very, very small. Well, that is our, not only the assumption, that is what we started with, right? If h is kind of approaching 0, then both these terms they are approaching 0, right? So therefore, we can write here that this is equal to 3x square. Correct? So, rate of change, instantaneous rate of change of a cubic function can be written as this. Now, if I say, find the instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 1, then what will you do? Simple. Just plug in 1 here. You say 3 times 1 square and you get your answer as 3. Do you understand? If I say find the instantaneous rate at x equals to minus 2, then you will say 3 times minus 2 to the power of 2 and that gives you a positive value of 12. Correct? So you notice that in this cubic function always the instantaneous rate of change is positive. Do you see that? It is it is do you think you expected that? Yes, it was. Because the function, do you see, is always increasing. At this point, it never turns. It never turns back. It changes the concavity, but it keeps on rising. So, the function is always increasing. So, if you draw any tangent anywhere, you'll always get a positive slope. Do you see that? So, it's always increasing, right? So, we expect this function to have a positive slope or positive rate of change, right? So it goes from minus infinity to positive infinity. That means the function is always increasing. Do you see that? And therefore, at any point in your cub cubic function, you will get a positive instantaneous rate of change in the parent cube. If you modify it by transformation, it may be a different story, right? It can be modified, correct? That's a different story. But the parent function will always have a positive instantaneous rate of change. Okay. I hope you understand the process. And this is a very important method. And it's called difference quotient method. Okay. We are going to use this for all our parent functions. So look for examples on a square function, square root function, reciprocal function. And those are going to help you to solve any problem on instantaneous rate of change. I hope that helps you. Please put your comments and uh, whatever your questions are on the video, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you.